Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since you saw me because I've been distracting myself with this, that and the other, so I haven't been reading as much as I, I would like to over the past two weeks, but I am back with the book review. Um, just FYI, just in case I wince or whatever during this review, I have woken up this morning I was totally fine yesterday, but I have clearly slept funny in the middle of the night and all of my, my right shoulder blade and into my back, it's, it's, it's hurting. I can move my arm about fine, but if I like lean back to relax and check, just even right now, I've got some pain across my right shoulder blade and I'm in a position where it's painful, but it's not too painful. So I'm going to try and keep my right shoulder as still as possible. Um, but if you know i move and i start wincing or hissing or whatever i apologize it's it's my jacked up shoulder um so yeah i was as i said totally fine yesterday and then i woke up this morning like this i you know you had that thing of slept funny in the middle of the night but also that <laughs> pending feeling of well i am getting a bit older now is this going to be more common or what i don't know we shall see um but yeah so i'm going to try and keep my my right shoulder in this position so then i don't uh you know have any problems but we shall see what happens especially because i like to, i talk a lot with my hands so <laughs> We'll see how long that lasts. But anyway, I'm here to talk about The Tide of Life by Catherine Cooks in the book I have been reading. Um, so this was a, a, a secondhand copy that my sister got for me uh, in one of the various loads of... It was like, it, I think it was one of those that she bought for me because uh, for she had loads of Catherine Cooks in books that she was getting rid of and she gave them to me. And then for... Uh, like birthday and Christmas um, for the past year, she's gone into various charity bookshops, found Catherine Cookson books and given me them. So I've had like, she's given me like six books uh, each time uh, to, that relates to Catherine Cookson. So I can't remember if The Tide of Life was from one of those um, times at Christmas or my birthday, or if it was in her bag that she just gave me. Um, when she when uh, I first got into Catherine Cookson, but by the way, this is what I've got. It is absolutely beautiful. It's aged. I love the colour that of of aged paper. It's so beautiful. And the smell. Oh my god, that is the good stuff. So when I opened this and started reading, I just had this the smell of paper, dry paper, and aged. Oh, it's just beautiful um this particular edition let me just check the information if i can actually open the page um so it was published in 1976 and it looks like there were various editions in 77 78 and 79 um all oh, right okay so but it doesn't actually indicate which one this is but i'm gathering because 79 is the last um edition that it refers to i'm going to go with this being the 79 edition so i don't know i gather there are no differences in the previous ones but yeah but it, god what made me smile is that on the back you've got the various prices for different areas this book which is like 500 and some pages let me just double check 510 pages long was one pound 25 oh if only if only we could have books at that price now if only <laughs> so what is the tide of life about so the tide of life is about a girl called emily who is 16 when we meet her and she's 19 going into 20 by the end of the book so it covers three between three and four years of her life so Emily works for the McGilby family. Uh, she's very comfortable there. She has a really good working relationship with the master uh, of the house, uh, Seb McGilby, and the mistress of, uh, of the house uh, as well. She works there with her little sister uh, and she's in a good place. And Seb um, McGilby teaches her the, th the uh, key series uh key phrase which is never say die and she learns a lot from from the mcgilby family 
but she's she's also extremely tough as nails as soon as you meet her as a 16 year old she you don't forget her she is somebody who and um, i love this about catherine and her writing that she writes her characters so well they even in the first like pages of meeting emily i understood everything about her backstory she, she, catherine, uh, catherine hadn't explicitly written saying emily went through xyz but I totally understood because of the way that she views the world. How she's very, very protective of her sister. She's very much that she has to bring in the money. She has to be the 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 person in charge. She has to make these decisions and such. Makes me understand that she had quite a tough upbringing. And yeah, without explicitly saying X Y Z happened to Emily when she was young, I already understood that. And that is shows what a great writer Catherine is. So Emily is happy at uh, the McGilby's household and then sadly in a very short space of time uh, Mrs McGilby dies and then Seb McGilby is killed in an accident and so her her mother and father figures of her of her life are completely stolen from her and she it, it, even though she strives for control to be able to be the one who is in charge of her own destiny as it were not struggling with control of i am just a complete control freak um because she's lost that control she she feels a wobble uh, as it were her, her ground is completely interrupted she doesn't know what to do so she takes her sister uh, to crofting house uh, in order to work as a, a maid as she worked at, at the McGilby's and in the process various things happen to her and she meets uh, two key men who will uh, who will impact her life in very different ways and it's all about Emily's struggle to survive and having the mantra of uh, never say die be the thing to sustain her so that's the basic premise of the story so i went into this knowing the story because i had seen the drama but when i made the announcement i said in that video i think this one was a drop i can't remember and then i was just like what it is it I, I honestly in that moment couldn't remember it was after i finished recording i was like oh my god yes it's that drama so i knew but because it'd been a while since i had watched the dramas i couldn't quite remember everything that happened which was really good because it meant I could go into this book um kind of blind <laughs> to it uh and just see how I how I go with it I have to say Catherine Cookson she has written this in a relatively easy manner and by that I mean anyone could pick this up and easily flow through the story it has a really good flow to it I loved the dialogue in it. Uh, Catherine's always great with her dialogue, I have to say, but particularly in this one, because Emily is such a feisty character, she she doesn't hold back. I, I love to see all the things that Emily came, came up with to say. And when she meets one of the key men in her life, uh, Larry, they have, oh, the fire between them, you can feel it very very clearly from you know not long after they actually meet and they go through a very fiery um period of their life which ultimately ends with a drop the mic fuck you moment that in that has fire included in it and that was the moment that i clearly clearly remember from the drama because it is like yeah drop the mic boom I'm out, bitch, and just <laughs> and Emily <laughs> leaves, and it's just absolutely fantastic. I love, 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 love that moment um, for her as a character, but also for the thing of I am now taking control of my destiny. I had uh, I've had stuff taken from me, but this is the point where I am going to come back and be the person who i want to be fuck the conformity of society fuck society just it, it just kind of feels like this this book or at least to me was like emily was just 
constantly flipping the middle finger at people and I was here for it I absolutely loved that now of course there are there is some quite sinister and disturbing stuff in this story because that's what Catherine wrote she wrote a lot about truth and and working class especially and there there are some things in this that might make some people uncomfortable i will say obviously i'm not referring to who it relates to you especially or anything but there is a um a birth sequence in this which is quite traumatic and very sadly is a stillbirth which uh people who may have experienced that could find um quite hard to read so i am just referring to that simply because it is quite a dramatic part of the story and um it can be quite upsetting for people who do not necessarily know that that is coming so i just wanted to flag that there might be some triggering stuff in here but to be fair i think you could say that probably about every one of catherine's books but the thing is is that catherine wrote as i've mentioned about true things in in life that there is a series of messed up stuff that can happen to you either through want which i know that sounds very weird to say but a thing of okay so let's let's take an example domestic violence a thing of I want to be in this relationship, I want this marriage, I am going through with it and then later discover that there is uh, abuse and such involved with it. It was, it began as a want but and didn't necessarily end as a want, so that's what I meant by that. Um, it, it, she, she always balances out the the darkness with the light Catherine but she but she makes it very clear with her characters uh and I think this is valid for all the books at least that I've read so far because I have got a load to go as you know I've got my Catherine Cookson jar that with with the struggles of life there come the light sometimes in that it's that it's that thing and i'm going to quote taylor swift here you know how i love my taylor swift um if you never bleed you're never going to grow and emily really embodies that in this book she is someone who will go through the dark shit basically in order to get to light in order to protect like her sister in order to find stability she will throw herself into that whereas other Catherine Cookson's characters so her female characters um may not be as bold a character may not be as gusto to do that but it is still important for them to learn the lessons that they learn and I love the lessons that that Emily learns even though it is tough it is as I said fiery it is unstable it's scary but she comes out the other end a striking woman i mean she's always been a woman even at 16 and what i mean by that as i, as I mentioned that we don't find out a massive amount about her past but we know that she's been through stuff we know there is something that has triggered her to be the bold character that she is so even at 16 it's like she is decades older than she actually is but she's still young at the same time there's still a lot for her to learn and so this entire book is life throwing shit at her and her dealing with it and it's important to read those things it's important to understand that the world is not always on your side and that's what I adore about Catherine's work she goes yeah life's not pretty deal with it and i think it'd be very interesting if she were alive now what her characters would be like would they would they be the same 
I love that her character, she celebrates women so much. And the working class, I mean, she celebrates her men as well, of course, but that she, her women in particular are exquisitely written. And I mean that for the good and the bad. She knows how to write character. She knows how to express them. She she understands them deep down to the heart and soul. They're not just fictional characters. They are people. And she just to write to write so passionately about these women and celebrate them and celebrate the fact that they are working class that they had to work hard to get where they where they get it just she makes them into queens and goddesses and people who shouldn't be forgotten through history even though yes i know they are fictional characters but they they aren't at the same time they're just stunning women and I love that. Um, so as to the, as, as I said, beautifully written, she as always uses the locations wonderfully, the north of England where she was from, where Catherine was from, she uh, she writes, it, it tr truly is a beautiful love letter to the north, north of England. And I love Emily. I think she is, and she's probably one of my favourite of Catherine's women, who I have encountered through books and also the dramas. Just to clarify, because I obviously, I, if you've watched any of my Catherine Christian videos, uh, I watched all the dramas. I then started reading the books, had a bit of break from the books, and now I've come back to the books. So uh, I, so I've only met. I've only, I feel like because Catherine wrote so many books into the hundreds, I feel like I have met like a handful of her women so far. Um, but yeah, I, I would really, I'm really, really enjoying being back in the realm of, of, of her worlds. And I think Emily is one of my favourite female characters that, that uh, I have read so far throughout her books. It's a, it's an easy read. Not so easy as in like you could dis, you know, like, say, I don't like lying on a beach and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not that kind of a person when I go on holiday. I like to go out, go to museums, walk around, etc. Um, but you know how you can have like beach reads as it were that are so easy to read that it's there's no substance there's no gravitas this is weighed down in gravitas so this is definitely a you know a, a holiday a read that you could take on holiday with you but it's got some weight so it's not like you can lay on a beach and just read it but not take it in um it's yeah so it's it's well written it's easily written, but it's got a lot of punch to it. There is some things in there that might be triggering for, for some individuals. But as always, Catherine completely and utterly respects the reader, the characters, and she doesn't shy away from the truth of things. And she should be celebrated for that, I feel. So, yes, I love Catherine. I think she was... An extraordinary writer and I am so happy to be back reading her books again. So yeah, Emily, my god you're a feisty woman and I love you. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on The Tide of Life. Oh, um, before I forget, The Tide of Life was a drama that, that was adapted the Catherine Cookson collection which I have on DVD and let me just get the cast list because I had it here. Um, so we have uh, Gillian Kearney playing Emily, who I really liked as Emily. I thought she was very, very interesting. Uh, and Seb is played by John Bowler. Larry is played by the late, great uh, Ray Stevenson. And Nick is played by James Purefoy. So those are Emily and the three men who 
are key to her life. And I've just remembered something which I forgot to say. I love the fact that um, I'm talking about celebrating women, how she celebrates men, especially Seb in this book, Seb McKil uh, McKilby, who, uh, Gilby, sorry, who uh, Emily worked for, who died tragically in an accident near the, near the beginning of the book. He kind of follows her, like, it, 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 throughout the story, like, she imagines that who uh, would Seb like this man who I've met? Would Seb be happy with what I've done? Would Seb tell me off about this thing? He is a really interesting character to um, to kind of haunt Emily through this story. But I loved, 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 loved the very, very, very last line of this book. I'm not going to say what it is, but yes, 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 he would. He really would is what I will say. And uh, if you want to know what that means, read the book. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on the tide of life. So yeah, the the, the drama, um, Ray playing Larry, oh, chef's kiss. He is absolutely brilliant. And I love James's Nick, that he's, he is the counterbalance. Larry is all fire and screaming and passion and ah, and James brings the quiet, um, just stillness of Nick. He plays it perfectly in the balance between the two. And you can understand how Emily gets caught between them. Uh, it's just brilliant. I really, I really, really enjoy the drama. And I feel like after I get back from mum and dad's uh, for Sunday lunch, I think I might rewatch it. So, because I, I only just finished the book like an hour or so ago so I haven't been able to re-watch the drama um to give my full thoughts on it but I absolutely love the Catherine Cookson dramas I've done a video about it I've done ranking of all of them so yeah if you want to hear my thoughts on the tide of life that I mentioned in that video go check it out so time to ask my usual questions would I read this again yeah if I needed a book that was just you know a pick-me-up that I could just be completely immersed in and you know follow a heroine that's a ball buster and just oh just some just a palate cleanser that I desperately need I'd go for the tide of life definitely uh, would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, I definitely would. But as I said, there could be some things in there that may be triggering uh, for some people, depending, you know, on how they feel about certain things. Uh, would I read any more Catherine Cookson's books? Well, yes, and I've got a whole jar dedicated to her. And my next read is a Catherine Cookson book. It is the Her Secret Son. Now, this is one Catherine's books are actually they're not really published anymore. Um, if you go on her official website, I think there's only about 20 of her books and she wrote well over a hundred. So there's a lot of her books out there. So it might well be that you'll need to go to secondhand bookshops to be able to find Catherine Cookson's works as my sister did absolutely incredibly around clearly where she lives a lot of people read Catherine Cookson because she as I said she was giving me like a half a dozen Catherine Cookson books each time that she she got stuff and she gave me an entire bag full of her books so I've got a ton of them but yeah some of them are still in print and this is one that I managed to get from local WH Smith still in print uh called Her Secret Son and it's set in 1881 so after Molly, uh, Molly Geary finds herself pregnant with landowner Angus McBain's child, she's left distraught and ruined. Dishonoured by being the secret mistress of McBain, she must find an alternative suitor to save her reputation. McBain devises a plan to claim his employee, Dave Armstrong, Davy Armstrong, sorry, as the father to Molly's child, leaving the pair forced to marry. The issue appears resolved, but with the secrecy comes consequences, and young Molly realizes it's tied. She is tied in a web of lies beyond what she could imagine. Catherine Cotton was the original and best-selling saga writer, selling over one hundred million copies of her novels. And um, yeah, and it's more blurb about and recommendations of other writers as well. So there we go. So yeah, so this is one that is still available in print, and so is a brand new copy I've never read before, and it's it's one that I don't believe 
is actually I, th I think this is one of her like later ones uh let's see if i can find it oh no it's 1971 so yeah so pretty late in her career but given that this one the tide of life that was also in the 70s wasn't it oh gosh yeah that was that was 76 so this is before the tide of life but i don't believe it has been made into a drama um but yeah because i cut i'm pretty sure it's not in that collection so this could be completely separate it's a story that i don't know whatsoever and never seen the drama of so there we are <laughs> so i'll be back with my thoughts on that as soon as i'm done and i promise you it's going to be a week i'm not having another two week break um because <laughs> i keep on having two week breaks of like because i've just been so i've been busy with other stuff distracting myself with other stuff work's been crazy i've been binge watching various tv series i need to have like now just just go right don't binge a tv series after work just sit and read for a while so i'm determined to be back in a week with a review of this one um so I guess i will see you when i see you uh, but oh i forgot to say have you read this book i'd love to know what you think leave a comment in the comments box below give a thumbs up thumbs down i'll let you decide and uh yeah i will see you next time and hopefully my shoulder will be much better <laughs> all right everyone bye